everyone. 8-bit days a week is here and we're gonna test out the PlayStation Classic for the first time. As you can see this is what you get when you power it on the first time. Language selection. And uh, let's just go with English. And we get a console button guide. Ah, so it just describes the use of the buttons on the unit itself. And as we can see, the power is the one that turns on or off the unit. And um, the reset button, much like the NES Classic or the SNES Classic, brings you back to the game selection screen. And the open button, well, since this thing doesn't accept even mini disks. Um, the open button is apparently used to change, like for example in Metal Gear 1 and Final Fantasy 7 where it, the game spans multiple disks, you have to change them in between, uh, in, somewhere in the middle of the gameplay. Um, all right, well hopefully we'll see that soon and let's see how handy that is. So here it is, uh, um, kind of plain looking actually, um, there's no uh, like a background music at least, uh, at least it's functional, we see the 20 games, kind of reminds me of the interface of one of the hacks for the Wii. Okay, settings. Health and safety, screensaver. Screensaver, I wonder what does it show. Uh, okay, just dims the screen. You can change the language again. Power save settings. Restored vault initial. Initialize console. Hmm. I wonder what's the difference between restoring default settings and initialize console. Anyway, I don't think that's important right now. Let's see, guide, product website. Oh, you have to use like a QR scan, I guess. Console button guide. Okay, brings us back there. A memory card. This probably where you save the game since all, all, uh, I mean, almost all of the PlayStation games used to save on a memory card. It doesn't have like a battery backup feature of course or a hard drive save option like unlike uh, say uh, Sega Saturn or any of the contemporary consoles um, okay nope there's not even a sort okay so everything's just lined up the way it is already Resume point, I guess it's uh, like a save state commonly found in emulators. Uh, Alright, so immediately you'll notice there is no like options for graphics. Like, um, I mean you can set it to 16 by 9 or how about some scan lines, none of those stuff. So this is where all the criticism comes from. It's all pretty bare bones, pretty plain looking. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and play at least one of the games that I'm very, very, very familiar with. I have played this a lot during its initial release. This is Tekken 3 and look at that. It's the boot screen when the game boots up on the old console. Um, okay. This is kind of exciting. But if you've been uh, around uh, like the gaming websites and all, I'm sure you have heard of the, the controversy. Actually, as I meant previously mentioned in the video, uh, previous video, um, there is some issues with the 
emulation here and that it's actually using an emulator Sony themselves once tried to shut down at least it's a variation of that emulator and that's just one of the issues there the other issue is that well I'll try to experience it for myself actually I'm starting to feel it right now and that is as you saw the boot screen earlier it said Sony Europe which leads us to this it's actually I mean some games were notably running in PAL versions which means lower as uh, lower frame rates and right now yep I'm feeling it so bad if you're very used to the normal speed aka the NTSC versions Japan or America's version yeah you'll be surprised how round two fight it plays like a poorly optimized emulator and that yep all my timings will be off this will require getting used to you uh, round one all right that fight. certainly takes away from games like uh, Tekken though because this game is really fast-paced and has precise inputs and timings and all nevertheless it's Tekken and it's still one of my favorite fighting game series I've been playing Tekken since uh, the first one's release in the arcades Round and of course Tekken 1 is the one of the first PlayStation games I've played Tekken 3 is the best of course in the PlayStation 1 era but yeah this is um, Alright, this is from my view, view and it doesn't really... You win. Uh, no, uh, what I'm trying to say is that no amount of uh, love that you have for Tekken can save it from this, this port from having its sluggish uh, performance. But anyway... Um, let's try the other games. You win. I'm gonna press the reset button now. And let's see what happens. Alright, we got a resume point there. I will use it. And it brings me back to the game. I'm gonna press it again. Um. Now Tekken is one of the noted PAL games here. Let's go for something that's on NTSC. Another favorite of mine. Metal Gear. It reminds you that there is um, a change disc at one point of the game. And see, it's you see here it says uh, Sony of uh, America. So we're expecting NTSC or 60 Hertz for this one, unlike the earlier one.
Yep. Most of us probably seen that a lot of times. Let's just go right into it. This brings me way back. This is Snake. Colonel, can you hear me? Loud and clear. What's the situation, Snake? Looks like the elevator in the back is the only way up. Just as I expected. You'll have to take the elevator to the surface. But make sure nobody sees you. If you need to, contact me by codec. The frequency is 140.85. When you want to use the codec, push the select button. When we need to contact you, the codec will beep. When you hear that noise, press the select button. The codec's receiver directly stimulates the small... I wonder if they made alterations regarding to the part where you'll need to get the actual case, jewel case of the game, so you'll know Merrill's codec number. I doubt it, but I wonder how they expect the first time players for this game to know that I mean did they I guess they're really expecting that you're gonna check out the FAQs or something um, I have to say this is not the PAL version or this is not a PAL version of the game but it Does kind of feel. I mean, I couldn't really tell about the game speed, but it's not exactly how I remembered it. Of course, I played this a number of times, so hmm, I would have thought I already instantly knew if there is something wrong, but. Um, I guess there I maybe there is something wrong because I'm not really sure that this is how I remembered it. Still Metal Gear, still one of the best games ever, especially for the PlayStation 1, it's essentially a must-have, which led to some other criticism and disappointment is that some of the games here is not what represents PlayStation, I guess. Um, everyone notes that it's missing a Tomb Raider or another staple, Symphony of the Night. But hopefully, just like the SNES Classic, this thing might get modified. I'm not actually following the scene of a modding PlayStation Classic. If it exists, probably does. I don't know yet. But uh, hopefully they do find a way. Maybe we could change the, those um, PAL version speeds to normal and hopefully add something like Symphony of the Night. I'm gonna put a resume uh, checkpoint. Oh, uh, another thing that the SNES does have an advantage over this is that there is no i mean this one the, the, uh, this one doesn't have a rewind feature or the borders so that's something that the snes has i'm sorry ha has an advantage over this one again so yeah there you see there does looks look looks some sort of a performance issue going on here it's not as smooth as we all remember it to be or 
maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but I'm positive that uh, I'm recalling it right because, as I mentioned, I've played this too many times. It's just um, I'm not sure what's happening. Okay, you know what, uh, let's, yeah, let's make a new one, let's try another game, um, I will try this one, this is a racing game that I also enjoyed very much, and what's surprising is that they didn't include Gran Turismo? That's uh, it really makes you wonder what was their thought process on game selection there. But this is a suitable, well it's no substitute, it's a completely different type of uh, racing game, but... Um, ooh. <laughs> I can definitely tell something is wrong with this one. Maybe, I, 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 initially I'm thinking maybe because it's being upscaled or something, but no, it, it, it feels like uh, it's running, um, it's like missing frames or something. That should be, that should be a bit big problem for... Um, like this one, a racing game. But let's see, I will try to actually play it. Let's see how it feels. obvious blurriness you know something like you'd find in the N64 when um, it's being upscaled I do feel some, what do you call it, frame skipping, well, at least it feels, I mean it, it still controls well, but I, as I mentioned it controls well, I skid a lot there. Maybe because I used to play this more using the analog, or I'm just making an excuse there. I wonder if you could actually use like the pocket station, like if you can use the memory card in in the system here as a, like a pocket station. But I guess that would require a different emulator altogether. Okay. Well, could have been worse, I guess. But so far, it's alright. Here's a game that um, I guess everyone kind of hates for having it being included here. I'm going to go check it out because I've never actually played this when it was released. I mean, I actually thought that was just like some hack game, it's like not an official release, uh, but apparently it's real.
So people are hating on this because it's a first person shooter on a console and it doesn't even have analog. And, um, you know, I played the uh, Doom on the Super NES. It's fine. We can all get used to it. But I have to feel for myself. How does it play? And keep in mind, I have no idea how to play this game. I'm assuming it's just a run and gun with, uh, well, since it's uh, Rainbow Six, there's probably some... Oh boy, that is dark. Um, yeah, I couldn't see. <laughs> I guess I need to turn on the lights or something. Is there a flashlight here? That's incredibly dark. I don't know if it's because of the emulation or it's really by design. Okay, it's not that bad. Of course, everyone prefers, even I, prefer a keyboard and mouse, but this ain't so bad. Um, crouch, how do you look down again? Oh, there. And, okay. How do I, can I go there? Oh, there. Right. Oh, there. I'm alive again. Open. Open. How do you open doors here? <laughs> I'm gonna need a manual for this <laughs> okay but um, as far as having a first person shooter on a console with uh, no thumbnails yeah you'll just need to get used to it but it's not completely terrible I mean like uh, maybe because like I said I used to play like a Doom on uh, the Super NES and uh Wolfenstein 3D as well. Alright, I'll just try one more game for this video. And here's a game I know um, everybody loves. No, actually. Director's Cut. Oh no, it's PAL version. That's weird. I didn't recall this being a PAL title as well, but anyway. I remember this game, the director's cut, got released actually twice because the first one, despite being called the director's cut, it actually still had sensors. So, I wonder which version are we going to get? Hmm. Unfast? <laughs> I don't recall this advanced thing. Nineteen ninety eight, eh? Uh, twenty years ago. Oh, it's been really been that long, eh? What is this? Wow, what a mansion! All their, Captain all their Lester, appearances are really <laughs> jagged and blurry. Stop it! Don't open that door! But 
Christmas. What is it? Maybe it's Chris. Now, Jill, can you go? I'm going with you. Chris is our old partner, you know. Okay, let me handle this. Stay alert. Okay. Well, despite being a PAL version, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel that much slower from the NTSC version, actually. Wait, let me try to get control of it first. Yeah, it's fine. What? What I haven't this? played it in the longest time, so probably that's it? why Blood. I'm thinking yeah, it's fine. Probably. It is slower, but it's something that you'll get this. used to. Hope this is not Chris's blood. All right. What do we see here? The first cutscene that had sensors, I guess. Right, let's see what we get. Ah, see? It's not it's not the uncensored one. I do believe that the uncensored one should f uh, feature uh, the guy's head rolling on the floor. I forgot his name. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's the mark there Daddy? that this is the censored director's cut version. That's slower than usual. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm just, just starting to what keep on comparing it? the speeds, Kenneth but was killed too. it's kind of getting Maybe hard to anyway, narrow down the performance weapon. issues to whether because it's a PAL version or because it's really a sloppy um, emulation, or maybe it's both. Or maybe that's why they chose PAL versions to kind of hide the uh, issues with their emulator. Anyway, I guess uh, that's it for this video. I just wanted to, you know, give out like initial impressions uh, and try it out a few games. So, uh, basically, it's some people might be really not happy with the how it all came out there's a I don't know if it's a performance issue with their emulator or maybe because it's the PAL version and that's another thing why oh why did they choose PAL versions for some of these games and um, and then regarding the games they kind of missed out on some of the most important PlayStation era titles uh, like the aforementioned Symphony of the Night, Tomb Raider, Crash, Parappa, Gran Turismo, games like those. Um, so th that's it for this video. I'm gonna be making more of uh, videos that's specific to each of these games. Um, some of them I've never played, honestly, such as Wild Arms. I've never played that, yes, believe it or not. So that should be an interesting experience to see how someone like me finds this really old games from before that I've never tried until now. So, okay. 8-Bit uh, This Week, thanks for watching. Uh, do leave a like, subscribe, comment, um, anything, and see you guys soon.